Here at PackCast, we're doing a little upgrading as we prep for the upcoming season. And so that being said, Now you can see my face. Crossy Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to an episode of Packers, the podcast where you ask me Packers fan. But it sure does help. I am your host, Tom Freakin' Frackin' Grossi. And today we're gonna, I'm gonna answer a question which, again, I didn't think I needed to answer, but a lot of folks have been in the comments and been hitting me up on the sliding into the DMs, and that's about good old running back Melvin Gordon. But before we get to that, I wanna do a quick reminder. The first Fantasy Football League is completely and totally full. The second one, there's only nine spots remaining. So if you are interested in joining the PatCast Fantasy Football League, again, I'm only running two, so there are nine spots left, and then we're done for the season because I want to keep it fun, manageable. And so you can head over to patreon.com slash comedy and a big shout-out and thank you to all my patrons who have already uh, joined the fun. Now, let's talk about Melvin Gordon. Uh, the short answer for this is... No, the Packers should not sign Melvin Gordon. But as always, I kind of wanted to give you I wanted to give you the the evidence as to why we shouldn't sign him. And it's not necessarily because I'm doubting his ability or his skills. If there's anything I'm doubting about Melvin Gordon, it's his future health and quite frankly, we just don't need another running back. I feel like we made a similar episode when it came to Le'Veon Bell, and so this is going to follow suit. So Let's talk about Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon in, right now for the LA Chargers is in the middle of a holdout. He wants a contract extension. There's one year left on his contract. And he and his agent have been very strict and firm saying, listen, if we don't get a, a deal that is satisfying, then we are either going to sit out or I demand to be traded. And so this may wind up being another Le'Veon Bell situation in which he just doesn't show up and he'll just be on a new team next year. And I was looking at some fan surveys that they did, and originally it was about 50-50 that they were like, oh, either re-sign Gordon or just wind up trading him. But then, uh, as of recently, there's been an overwhelming surge to actually trade Melvin Gordon. So it seems that the fan base in, in L.A. has kind of turned on him a little bit. But to go through Melvin Gordon's stats, because I remember back in 2015 how he just he wasn't healthy and obviously he didn't put up amazing numbers. And so... Game started, he started 13 games in 2015 and in his rookie year, uh, 184 rushing attempts, 641 yards, zero touchdowns, was averaging about three and a half yards per attempt and had 33 receptions, but again, also zero touchdowns. 2016, he exploded on the scene, made at the Pro Bowl that year. He started 11 games, rushed for two, 254 attempts, 997 yards, 10 touchdowns, about 3.9 yards per attempt, and then had 41 receptions with two touchdowns on top of that. 2017 is the only full season that he has played. He had 284 rushing attempts, uh, 11, 1,105 yards, eight touchdowns, only 3.9 yards per attempt again, 58 receptions, four TDs. And then last year, making the Pro Bowl once again, tw only started 12 games though, 175 attempts, 885 yards, 10 touchdowns once again, 5.1 yards per attempt, so a big jump over previous years, and 50 receptions with four touchdowns. And so when you look at his production, Right In the past three seasons, it's been pretty great. He's obviously been, been that workhorse back for the L.A. Chargers, similar to like what you would see in like a Todd Gurley, who also, rumors have it, that Sean McVay is not going to use him as that workhorse anymore. You even saw that in the playoffs slash Super Bowl last year, that they started using Gurley less and less and less. Because using those workhorse backs do come at a cost, and it usually comes at the cost of that player's health. And Melvin Gordon has an extensive injury history. In 2015, he had a knee tear and went on IR after week 15. In 2016, he had a knee PCL sprain uh, and missed the final three games of that season and also had a hip sprain. In 2018, he had a hamstring sprain and missed week seven. And then in 2018, again, he had another knee sprain and missed three games after week 12. And so... My big concerns, if we're just looking at this of like, yeah, the Packers have all the money in the world and they, they don't have the talent at, at running back. We're pretending that's the case. Then you look at this and one big concern that I have is that while his production is really good, 
He's getting banged up, obviously, in that he's injuring his knee and he's injuring his hamstring. And he has one season where he's remained relatively healthy. And that was 2017 when he completed his only full season. And the guy is a receiving threat. He's obviously good when it comes to rushing. I know some of those yards per attempt could be a little bit better, but last year he freaking exploded with 5.1 yards per attempt. And so just right off the bat, I have concerns about the player and his longevity. And so I wouldn't want the Packers to pick someone up just because of that, considering that rumor has it that Adam Schefter reported that the Chargers offered him 10 to $11 million per year and Gordon and his agent turned it down. And considering that at that money, there are only he would that would make him the fourth highest paid running back, only behind Gurley, Bell, and David Johnson. And so he is going to be demanding ridiculous amounts of money. And if there's a big question mark at his health, I don't know if I want to take that risk. But let's talk about why he's just not good for the Packers in general. Right now, we have Aaron Jones, we have Jamal Williams, we have Trey Carson, we have Dexter Williams, who we just drafted, and we also just picked up from the Jaguars, Corey Grant, who Gutekunst seems very high on, and the guy has ridiculous 40-yard dash speed. And so the argument I'm making here is, one, I want to see more of Aaron Jones because I personally love Aaron Jones, and the argument could be made that, again, he does have some injury issues, the possible health risks, and with Jamal Williams, he he's kind of like gone back and forth in games where he's been amazing and other games he hasn't really been doing so much. And then, of course, we just drafted Dexter Williams. The point that I'm trying to make here is that we have an abundance of talent and you have Matt LaFleur who's come out and flat out said, listen, this is going to be a running back by committee. That's how we're going to operate this run game. And so... Uh, like people who are expecting Aaron Jones to have like this miraculous season that is going to put over like 1200 yards. I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. And that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because he's going to be constantly rotated out. And so it'll keep guys fresh. It'll keep them longer on the team. It'll keep them healthier. And so I look at this as a positive. And right now to bring in a guy who is going to command ridiculous amounts of money, who is also a health risk, when we already have guys who are going to fill that committee role, I, I don't think it, it makes a whole lot of sense for the Packers to bring him in right now. We have a lot of talent. We have, I don't even know if we know what we have. Matt LaFleur, obviously in Tennessee, heavily utilizing the run game. Hell, even when he was with, uh, LA, the Rams, and they were used, they had guys like Todd Gurley. They have all, like, he is a run, 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 run guy. They did this with Derek Hun Henry last year with the Titans. And so I'm very curious to see what kind of role the running game is going to play in this offense. And I think it's going to play a dramatic role, and it's going to take a lot of pressure off Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to use that, his newfound run game to the best of his ability, more play action, or he's just going to be able to, you know, if we get five or six yards on first and second down, he's going to have to convert less and less and less yardage on third down. And so the point that I'm making here is that it doesn't make sense to pick up a guy like Melvin Gordon. Yes, he's a good player. I do have questions about his health, but the price tag he is going to demand is going to be way too high for the Packers to play. And we already have an abundance of talent there. Let's see what we have first before we go out and try to spend a kajillion dollars on a new running back. But that is just my opinion. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or at TomGrassyComedy on all social media, social media you see down below. Check out Packcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, and of course here on the YouTube. Just check out Tom Grassy, and it's up there. And again, check out patreon.com slash Comedy if you would like to join the Fantasy Football League or just to support me in general. There's some pretty cool rewards on there. And finally, we are doing one more run of the uh, PackCast shirt. So if you wanted to check that out, go to bonfire.com slash PackCast. Everything is in the description down below. But thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastical weekend. It's training camp. It's a beautiful time. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, Go Pack Go!